History Department. Uh, today we're going to talk about the roles that uh, colonialism played in Southeast Asia. So we've got about 11 questions we're going to ask you. They're in no distinct order. So let's get at it. What major role did colonialism play in Southeast Asia? Um, let's see. I mean, the biggest thing I would say is that it um, westernized the region and if let's say you don't like the term westernization the western world and what we call the modern world are basically the same thing now and so a lot of transformations happened that brought that area into a more unified modern world they were violent and destructive in some ways but they're you know the people in Southeast Asia today study the same things, do the same things as we do in, in America. And that didn't, that wasn't the case 200 years ago. Okay. As we see today, there's still a lot of unrest in those areas. Is that due to the issues left by the countries that colonialized them and the lack of helping prepare them to better their countries when they left them on their own? Uh, in some cases, you could say that. Um, so, well, and that's, I know, I would say it's hard to say that. Um, in the, like, let's take um, one instance, which is the, um, the violence in southern Thailand uh, of the, the, the Malay Muslim community there against the uh, Buddhist Thai community there. That isn't really the result of colonialism, um, in that um, it's, it's something that's you know, go, has a deeper history of Thai expansion southward into these areas that's, you know, beyond their control. So there's one example of something that, you know, um, colonialism isn't really responsible for. But if you go to Burma, where there are ethnic groups that are fighting, yeah, those tensions pre-existed colonialism, but under British colonial rule, the British favored the minorities over the majority Burmans. And that led, led to, you know, kind of a deeper sense of their differences that is still played out today. So it goes both ways, I would say. Now, how did the U.S. get involved with the Philippines? Uh, without much thought, it seems. You know, it's um, the U.S. got in this war with Spain and then sent a, a fleet over and easily captured Manila. And then after that, uh, I mean, I haven't studied this very deeply, but, you know, um, seemed like a good idea to keep going at that point although it then led to a, a pretty you know nasty war afterwards and then so the treaty what was the treaty of paris and what did it end up having to do with the american filipino relations so that was the treaty that ended the war with spain and in that treaty the u.s obtained former spanish possessions like um, guam and the philippines and the u.s also gave um, the Spanish, I think, $20 million. So did we buy the Philippines or was it just kind of a friendly exchange? Uh, the treaty keeps it kind of vague, but it was basically meant to settle this conflict, but it was also the first step of America's kind of global expansion. What was the main motivation for both Western European countries and the U.S. to occupy the colonialized peace? Oh, resources, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I only learned about Southeast Asia after like learning about Japan and China and I think so much of us think of like those places as the big story of modern history but the whole colonialism in Asia it's just it's Southeast Asia that's where all the resources were and that's where you know that's where everyone focused on. With both the US and uh, Western European countries they brought in a lot of uh, Christian mm. what kind of lasting impression did that leave on Southeast Asia? Um, so there are Christian, I mean, the Philippines is totally Christian, well, not totally, but majority, but there are Christian communities all throughout the other countries. Um, I think the impact or a problem you might say that has created is that in general, it's minority groups in countries that have become Christians other than the Philippines. And a lot of those groups um, tend to live, not always, but in, say, um, mountainous areas. And so before colonization, there was um, a distance between the lowland people and the upland people. But now, if the upland people are Christian and the lowland people are something else, in some ways that creates a new you know, barrier between the two groups. And so, yeah, that's one side of it.